Would you like to support Cubs Out Loud? One way is to join us over on Patreon. For as little as a buck a month, patrons get early access to our shows, the pre and post show, and various other rewards. You can learn more at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Thanks to all of our patrons for their support in making this podcast. It's Sunday, August 13th, 2023. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Everyone else is thinking it, and I just say it. Welcome to Cubs All Out the Bear Podcast with Hidden Sherman Linked, episode number 706. Guess what, folks? <laughs> it's going to be one of those shows. I think that's a reference to something, but I feel like I know it, but I'm not sure. Well, what the heck? It it, it sounds like it's a reference, or not really is. The only, like, thing references this. Oh. Pushing up my glasses with my pointer finger using the bridge of my glasses. Not the cool, uh, 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 Dean Cain, uh, Clark Kent with just, oh, you know, it's, it's the, and here I'm the only one of us without glasses on, but that's okay. We should put some tape around this. <laughs> Maybe that would help. A bitch to get off though. I well, I think. And if it gets stuck on the glass or something, it's just a little nasty. Yeah, I, could, I, could, I mean, you could. Just, I guess you could technically get it off uh, with like something, like a gross acrylic, like nail polish or something, to get it unstick to sticky. But like, if it's stuck there and if you don't get all of it, it just looks bad. With handy, a nice uh, and free cloth to clean my glasses with. Anyways, it's nerd culture, right? Gary, tell us more. (laughs) Yes. So this is a whole different uh, episode. It's not a part of a series, and I don't expect it to become a series. (laughs) Famous last words. Um, (laughs) But yeah, um, this idea came to me recently. I was thinking about how... uh, Culture has really shifted from when we were, you know, prepubescent, like then going into our teens. Um, so the concept is then versus now, you know, for those of us that lived through the 70s and 80s, we might remember a film franchise, uh, Revenge of the Nerds. And this, um, the thing was back then, nerd was used as a slur. Um, just like, you know, the F word, uh, or, you know, other such colorful things. And here we are four decades later, it's now, you know, the first part of the 2020s. And I feel like nerd culture has become a whole thing. Like, a you know, an, an entertainment industry in and of itself, Uh um, that it, it's kind of like uh, <laughs> we grew up, we got jobs, we have money. <laughs> so we're now we're in control of things. Maybe we've kind of touched on this before. Yeah. So, you know, there's there's some some questions. Um, is the current interest in all things nerdy? And that's a big umbrella. An actual shift in overall perspective and acceptance, 
Like, is it cool to be into like nerdy stuff? What we would consider nerdy stuff because it was nerdy when we were younger. Or, or maybe both or have things moved into an inevitable cash grab <laughs> because the nerds of the eighties are now the adults, as I'm saying, and have the disposable income and so they're willing to pay for the prop replicas. They're willing to buy all the toys. They're willing to get all the merch, fund all the things, so on and so forth. Hmm. I mean, I think huh. part of it is just accessibility, too. It, and, and also kind of a transformation of somewhat transformation of what nerd means now like nerd doesn't really mean this like the slur that it used to be back okay. in back when we were in elementary middle and high school our school days nerd nowadays is because you have like a gaming nerd a D, D nerd specifically about the specific things that are nerd about this game or that game or or this thing or that thing such as a football nerd well they it's enjoy looking that... all the stats in football and they watch all the games they know all the players and being like they're the ones that that did you know that he just made 13 touchdowns this season his highest was at 42 for a season or something like that. <laughs> well, so your your imitation of the behavior of a description of a nerd, um, especially the affectation of your voice, I find it interesting. So Wikipedia um, it says a nerd is a person who uh, seen as overly intellectual, obsessive, introverted or lacking social skills. Uh -huh. Which I find that last little bit interesting. It says such a person may spend inordinate amounts of time on, here we go, unpopular, little known, or non-mainstream activities, which are generally either highly technical, abstract, or related to niche topics. That, um, I would declare, would be more of the original definition of a nerd. Okay, the so continuing on. The original definition. It says, additionally, many so-called nerds are described as being shy, quirky, pedantic, or and, and, ooh, here we go, unattractive. Originally derogatory, the term nerd was a stereotype, but as with all pejoratives, it has been reclaimed and redefined by some as a term of pride and proud identity. Right. As Felicia Day <laughs> sang, now I'm the one that's cool. Right. And that's kind of the point, I think, that's seeing the shift that has happened is this um, it's weird to say it but being smart and being intellectual and, and what have you has become cool, popular um, a thing that gets you money and success like it has become like the thing like we have we saw when we were growing up like the jerk the jerk <laughs> The joke was that, like, yeah, the nerd was really, really, you know, was introverted and kicked, you know, pushed, kicked and pushed, gosh, picked on. I'm trying to find a word, and I keep <laughs> jumping to different words. It's so weird. Hi, guys. Um, I've had too much caffeine. Um, <laughs> picked on uh, or what have you. And the, the, the trope was, like, and the nerd, like, the nerd thing was, like, you know, I will be your boss someday. Like that was sort of the 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 redemption for the nerd was that like they would, you know, become the you know person making the big bucks, the person, you know, with all the cars and money and and then success. And we're seeing, you know, to be honest, that's kind of in a sense, sometimes the way it is now. Um, think about, you know, some people you would consider maybe nerdish. Like I would, the one that comes to mind is like Bill Gates, you know, the, the super like 
probably introverted things we've heard you hear about is like they like they weren't probably very popular all that stuff and then now they're worth millions upon billions of dollars and um you know what have you and i also i think that shift has allowed nerd to not be nearly as terrible i think people are wearing it more with pride um now more so than then i mean i would i would still say if you are in high school and like even now if you were in high school and being called a nerd what have you you would probably still be bullied and picked on and what have you there would still be that issue but um we're seeing it as it doesn't mean at the end of the day that nothing's bad that you're gonna you're gonna be alone and terrible and horrible for for you know rest of your life it's a give it time give it patience you know keep moving forward and maybe then um you'll um see the 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 fruits of your labor as it were the fruits of the bullying the fruits of the teasing because you'll be the one making the money and and um being the success when and leaving your small town or your town or wherever and and you know that's sort of the ha ha jokes on you you know you're still stuck at home watching the football games at the high school because you never move beyond 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 the high school kind of thing mm-hmm. I think it's I think it's interesting because they also go on to talk about a couple of other things, the stereotype um, and like how there can be some harm to that. But also like that there's been like this quote unquote appearance, but that was really evocative of a certain time. Mm-hmm. And that isn't like, you know, currently the case. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I find it interesting. Uh, one of the parts about this that I also uh, am drawn to is that it goes on to explain about the the rise of Silicon Valley and the computer industry at large allowed so many quote unquote nerdy people to accumulate, as you're saying, large fortunes and influence media culture. And then a lot of the interests of stereotypically the time, superheroes, fantasy, science fiction Mm -hmm. um, are now international pop culture um, juggernauts. That's which true. I, which I find interesting because like so now we're in the 2020 so like in the 2010s up to 2020 I really felt that was the zeitgeist like that was the movement of culture was that we were like like I, I it's funny because you guys read comic books and um still do and that was a thing that like when I was a kid that to be into like the superheroes and that kind of stuff and to know well this is like the third iteration of this character and like this time it's different because of xyz and blah 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 like that kind of stuff to me evokes the concept of what the definition is like from Mm -hmm. from the stereotype of like being really into the the knowledge of something um in a certain way and now we're like at this point where i feel like we have this whole like we have all these companies these businesses industry you name it that like is tied into this structural concept because and it's probably always been this way like people are always like no offense trying to make a buck because they won't have a roof over their head and who can blame them on that but now more than ever like it's this nexus of everything coming together so the technology is here. You can make your own things. You can have your own small business. You can promote it online. You know, like there's all this stuff that happens that you now could potentially be self-sufficient in, you know, having a shop and creating things that are based off of these big um, yeah. fictional IPs. Yeah. I think it's it's very interesting like you were saying like that comics and such and heroes became were seen as like the the haha you're into that kind of thing and now they're multi-million dollar like movies and films and and tv shows and um you know uh owning a comic shop probably isn't as like um 
successful it probably could have been, especially like five, 10 years ago. It still is a thing. Um, you know, there's the other thing that came to my mind as you were kind of talking about this, you know, the um, concept of nerd, the visual of nerd, that kind of um, social awkwardness and what have you of a nerd. Um, some of that, the reason that may have shifted is um, the show that popped in my head, which was Big Bang Theory. Mm. Like, you, right. that show was, yes, it was a comedy, and it was kind of poking fun at nerd, especially in the beginning. Like, these were four, like, very intelligent, very tropish nerd-type people, um, socially awkward in all kinds of ways, and, um, you know, as the show progresses, if you watched it, you know, spoiler alert, but if you haven't watched it, I mean spoiler alert, but, um, you know, they are, they grow to find love and romance. They become very successful in different ways. Um, they end up being happy. All of them, I think in some way, shape, or form, find, you know, romance at some point during the season, if not, if not continuously. Mm-hmm. And they're not seen as, while it is a comedy and it's poking fun in a way, there are serious moments. There are real, real you know, there's real moments to the show. And it adds a element that makes it less of a ha-ha joke joke, like bullying situation, and more of a, they're actually real people, and maybe we should start treating them with respect. Hmm. Yeah, it is interesting because in the the Wikipedia they make reference to the fact that nerds were pretty much bullied um, for several reasons, from physical appearance to social background, like their awkwardness. And uh-huh. but what I also find interesting is that they they make a reference to that uh, someone had suggested that the reason why nerds were singled out so much is their indifference to popularity or social context. Mm. Um, especially in the face of a youth culture that was so focused on popularity. So you had to be like accepted by the way you looked and who you hung Mm -hmm. out with and blah, 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 what you were involved in. And in a way like nerds, you know, when we were younger had eschewed all of that, like did not give any shits about like, you know, having, Calvin Klein jeans or um, hyper color shirts or, (laughs) you know, like like (laughs) having these, you know, kind of aesthetic looks about them, you know. Um, And it is interesting because now, like, I remember when I was when I was younger, it felt like I don't want to say it was a bad thing, but people didn't really get excited or celebrate braces. Mm -hmm. And. I don't think that they celebrate it now, but I think like it's just a different generational concept of like, mm-hmm. like now I feel like people do it because they want to have a perfect smile, right? Not because they want to or have to realign their teeth. Mm-hmm. I mean, as adults, yes, but you know, yeah, yeah. Um, is there anything like like you know for me the nerd was always I was a nerd I will I will own it you know shut up queen <laughs> <laughs> yeah whatever yeah I guess well yeah. so I've got a question yeah. before you continue David because um, I've heard this term recently and I think it's a recent term but I don't know do you consider yourself a blurred? Is that black nerd? Yes. <laughs> I've not heard. I've not heard it in okay. that context, but yes. <laughs> it's a thing that, like, I've heard over the past two years. Um, three people that um I've watched on in social media that are consider themselves black nerds, and they call themselves blurds. And I was like, the first time I ever heard it, I was like, "What?" And I was like, "Oh." I, I mean. It makes sense. It's not a term I've technically <laughs> called myself, but 
sure. Hmm. I think I don't I really it, know if I like the word. Well, <laughs> that's fine. I find it interesting because it's like a co-opting of ownership of the concept of being a nerd, but yeah. recognizing that like nerd possibly from the eighties did it for a little while, um, have this representation of this concept that people thought it was just, you know, it was weird white dudes. Um, and or words. No, <laughs> that doesn't, that doesn't sound good. Now what I, even- <laughs> what I do find interesting, and they make reference to it in the Wikipedia's, um, they also recognize that the Steve Urkel character from Family Matters kind mm-hmm. of like shifted yeah. that yeah. stereotype. I, there was so, <laughs> yeah, there was that was actually one of the things I was going to mention. Like, um, I owe not owe, but it's weird to say it, but it sort of makes sense. Steve Urkel made being nerdy entertaining mm-hmm. and funny. Um, I mean, it was absurd. It was TV. You know, it was 90s sitcom, you know, like, expect craziness. But it was a touch point or touchstone for nerd culture. Um, and kind of as you were kind of you were saying like um being black and nerdy is was i would say it was it was counter to um the culture Mm -hmm. um as it were um being it's weird but being smart was not was seen as being a more um white thing um, and that's going to sound like really bad, but that's kind of, it was, mm-hmm. it was not how you were successful. You were successful because you were athletic. You were successful because you were popular or pretty. You were not successful because you were smart. Um, not saying that there were not smart black people out there. It's just that that was not the way to, you would be successful. Uh, which is counter, you know, to reality, you know, um, as someone who was a nerd growing up and still is now, I will say it, fuck it. Um, uh, it, I was in a weird place. I wasn't bullied. I will put it like that. Like I went to a school where you were, you were, it was still a high school, it was still a public high school, but being smart was not a, like, fuck you, nerd, like, get the fuck out of the way kind of thing. It was very much on the, not on the same par, but on a similar par as, like, the football person. Like, being the smart person was not unpopular, as it you kind of have made, they make it out to be in, like, the movies. Mm-hmm. Um, it was very much, like, on par with things. So, um it helped that helped me adjust but it also in a weird way alienated a part of myself um that i've you know when i went to college i came to grips with but uh the the big part was for me i wanted to be smart, smart and i wanted to be successful because i knew that was my ticket out of my city out of, you know, the hometown you grew up in. Mm-hmm. Um, and that helped propel me to keep moving forward. And Steve Urkel and, and going to the school and not doing, um, and doing well, I was smart and I wasn't, the, obviously I wasn't the smartest person in my class, but I was smart. And um, I think there was a year, the year that I graduated high school, he had because it was a top like the valedictorian is the smartest person in your class and we had seven because they all tied wow there was no there was nothing to differentiate grade wise what have you wise between these people so they were all considered valedictorian and i'm pretty sure they did either one of two things either 
they each gave like a really, really short speech, or they narrowed it down to two and those two gave a speech. I'm, it's been 20 plus years. Actually, technically, it's been 25 years um, since I graduated high school. So a lot of memory is gone. <laughs> Thanks, lovely. <laughs> Jim said you're old. Oh, that marital bliss. Mm-hmm. See, it's going so well. So much well. <laughs> Yeah. So, I mean, I, the thing of it is, is that I, I've kind of been wondering when and how long will this continue? Like, have has have things shifted that now, like, we don't really think of things so much as being nerdy, although. Uh, like, you know, you made reference earlier to Jeff to like, you know, sports and statistics. Um, and it's interesting because, like. You know, like another aspect we haven't talked about yet, like was like kind of considered, I think considered nerdy was like D and D, Dungeons and Dragons, like you know tabletop board, you know role playing game stuff, and now like I I can't even wrap my mind around how big that is in scale. I mean, just this summer there was a D twenty like like campaign videoed with drag queens. So it was mm-hmm. like Dragon Dungeons. Dungeons and Drag Queens on Dimension yes. 20. Right. Like, like, and I was just like, what? Like, not that it can't exist, but I was like, wow. Well, like, there, talk there's about. Entire, entire drag podcast. <laughs> a yeah. D&D podcast right. with Queens of Adventure. Mentioned on, on <clears throat> Critical Role's uh, Critter Hug one time. Right. And so, like, it's not that these things can't exist, but I find it interesting in reflection to think back 40 years ago, you know, 30 to 40 years ago and think about, like, where things were culturally and what that would have been like, yeah. you know. Um, I mean, look at the 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 Netflix smash series Stranger Things. Right. I mean, the Duffer Brothers have literally just, like, taken our childhoods, hit, hit high speed blend and, and and poured it into a glass and just like, here's your Soylent Green, you know, and, <laughs> you know, making us like, you know, imbibe the nostalgia like on mm-hmm. LSD, basically, and not even LSD. Um, you know, it's just it, it, it's like a drug because, you know, we're we're they're taking all the things that were part of our childhood that like made up the entertainment aspects and like kind of regurgitating it in a different way. But if you if you live through that time, you catch all the references, you understand mm-hmm. the things that they're doing. And I found it very intriguing that the whole series starts off with D&D. And I was like, OK, this is where we're going. Got it. Yeah, like, with like the, we're going to with the advent of fifth edition. Uh, that's when the popularity of D&D started spiking. And then right. with some famous actors also coming out as D&D players, I mean, Matthew Lillard has an entire company uh, mm-hmm. which takes D&D products and makes a premium package that they that, that they sell. You've got uh, stars like Joe Meganello, who's all over the place on D&D as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, he's even shown shown a room that he has in his basement, which is dedicated to playing D&D. Yeah. Uh, I think one of the big things about now versus then is a lot of the things that nerds were interested in are now popular or mainstream in some way, shape, or form. Right. Like, hell, Technology. Yeah. Yeah. Your phone. Everybody has a phone. Some of them, some people can use it as uh, better than other people. But needless to say, some of the people that, that know it aren't, would probably not consider themselves nerds, but they're so good at using the device in one way, shape, or form. Oh, there's an app for that. Right. Or, right. oh, yeah, you can find it in the settings over here. And, without realizing it they're actually a little nerdy about something mm-hmm. yeah but i but i don't think people would see it as a negative moniker necessarily like it right. used no. to be i mean I, I think that's also part of the complexity of the change of the culture over time now 
Yeah, with is popularity that, you know, come, comes their their being a nerd is because you're so into it, you're considered a nerd, but because it's still a thing that's popular in general, like yeah. a lot of a lot more people are interested in animation and anime. Star Trek. Mm-hmm. People who like Star Trek, they were called Trekkies or Trekkers. They were considered nerds. Yeah. Nowadays, a lot of people love Star Trek and they're not necessarily right. considered nerds. Well, I mean, so look did at the Will popularity Wheaton. reduce reduce the kind of thing. It's honestly, this is kind of a evolution that's very much like the gay community when you think about it yeah i mean like i think there could be parallels made between different like groups and how they come to a rise of like i don't know if i want to say prominence but like um familiarity there's not so much uh like kind of a hiding and the shadows Mm -hmm. um aspects to that the reason i bring up will wheaton is because like He's always been like the uber fan and and who got to be on the show and and owns his nerdiness and his memeiness. Like he is very much a part of the cultural zeitgeist of social media, like loves being on online and responding to people and finding it lovely that people like comment about him as Wesley Crusher and then, like, talk about the the opportunity of a lifetime. He's the host of um, the Ready Room, the Star Trek like like talk back after show, um, which I find interesting because he opens the show every episode. Hey, nerds! Like, he just calls it out because he's uh-huh. like, "That's who we are," you know. And that and there's that's the end of it. Like, you know, yeah. like. <laughs> I think the, the the big thing has been that nerdum has not is is um like like Jeff said like the Felicia Day song like I'm the one that's cool it's cool now it's it's popular now it's the the niche things that you enjoy you can find other people that now enjoy it as opposed to like it being a secret and being hidden like you mentioned D and D like back in the eighties like. Mentioning that you were like into Dungeons and Dragons was a a it it was you you don't do that you never do that because you know satanic panic and all that that's being one thing but like the whole mm-hmm. like that's things that nerds do in their closets when you know you know when their mom isn't home like it's it's th- th- that's their like like their fun is stupid and and not not um. It's not for us. Like that was sort of the thing. Um, it was funny because the my first ever, well, not first ever. I had a I had a cousin who was into um, RPGs, but after that, um, I encountered it because again, being a nerd, um, I did Quick Recall, like um, Quiz Bowl kind of thing, and um, I was at a competition, and there were like three or four people at a table because we were in between like we had like lunch or whatever and they were sitting around a table playing D mm-hmm. and I was just like that's I don't like that and it felt weird because it felt like well at least I'm not like them like yeah I'm a nerd but I'm not that nerd well that is interesting that you kind of make that like delineation about the differences so like Dustin who was in the live chat was kind of talking about HTML code and stuff right so there's like a whole technology nerdism about like you know, being into coding um, mm-hmm. and computer programming as opposed to being like into the internet or social media or devices or like software. Like there's so much that has grown out of like that that time that it's now all these different slices, so to speak, of if the, of you know, the bigger nerds, thing. Nerds, you wouldn't have some of the things that you want, that right. you have nowadays. Hey, and... I am I am feeling super blessed that the nerds made porn on the internet happen. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like looking at old copies of Playboy back in the eighties was not making it happen. Just saying. <laughs> and technology. <laughs> they made and Tumblr. Can... They made Twitter. 
we helped invent the iPhone, smartphones, Bluetooth technology, connecting things so people can instantly yeah. put peen out to the world. It's beautiful. Yeah, yeah and that's the, the best, like, when the thing is, like, it also connected us in a way. You weren't alone anymore. If you were a person, like a Trekkie, um, even with the conventions and everything else, you now had someone that you could talk to. You can make a connection because you're no longer alone. You find this, you find this like 1980 like VHS tape movie that never made it to like you know film um, to, to to the box office. You find that movie hilarious. Well, guess what? There's a whole like Reddit full of people that love that fucking movie, and you can sit there on that you know in that chat space or on that Reddit and talk about shit for as long as you want. Um, you like D&D? Guess what? You can go every, anywhere practically and find, you know, D&D people. You're probably literally tripping and falling over people who are into D&D nowadays. Um, Star Trek, mm -hmm. same thing. Star Wars, same thing. You know, very popular things. It's not, it's not as hard as it once was to connect with people who are into the same things that you were as a nerd like that is it is it's become more accessible it has become more um relevant and it has become more mainstream and okay and that's i think some of the shift that we've seen from when we were you know younger when we didn't have ways to really connect unless you were actively talking about something or somehow finding out or bumping into someone at a at a you know convention or what what have you you didn't have a way to connect with them and now we have multiple ways to connect with people well what i find interesting also i was thinking just now about stranger things and like you know the representation like how you know will and his group of friends they have one um person of color that's a friend who also plays D and D. And when I started watching that, I was like, so I wasn't into D&D &D as a kid, so I don't know how realistic that is. I'm not saying it wasn't realistic, but I'm thinking about how anything for people of color to be involved in was probably, you know, a different experience, if not potentially gatekeeped in various ways. So... Um, the latest season, I found it interesting that the little sister, who's even more of a nerd, in my opinion, than the brother is, because she knows her shit and like is is like better at D&D &D than any of them, practically, it seems. It is super fucking sassy. Like, I was like, oh, sh that's that's it. That right there. Like, that's wild to me. She's like, you know sciencey book smart like highly perceptive pays attention to everything that's going on like nothing gets past right. her i right. i found that very very intriguing um so yeah like i think now i agree with you damien like the, like if there's pretty much anything you're interested in there's probably a cultural space for it somewhere mm -hmm. you just kind of have to internet search it to find it in some yeah. way there there's a discord for everything also that <laughs> <laughs> so on the on the concept of where we talked before about the nostalgia stuff and now you know i mentioned the question about is it a, a cash grab like do we think it's inevitable that by growing up and becoming the adults and the decision makers and being the people that so to speak have the control like i, I guess it, like is that i guess that's a question like do we think it's inevitable do we think the parallel to it in conjunction with it uh like the entertainment industry is like, oh, look, there's be there's money, there's there's pots, oh gold out there. Let's pick all the pockets. Like, <laughs> well, I mean, of course, if something is capitalism. popular, <laughs> the capitalists of the the American society. By the way, hot take: uh, America is not a democratic society; we're a capitalist so society. Um, but uh. Of, and even just across the world, it's the same thing. It, it, it's 
hey, somebody thinks something's popular, let's make something for it. Right. Uh, in relation to it, we can yeah. make some money for it. Yeah. If we it, basically by providing these tools or or uh, merchandise for a certain thing, we are helping to support the person. They just have to pay us for it. But you know what? You should pay right. for services rendered. You should also, I think, be supportive of the ancillary things that come along because of where we are today in the culture. Like, I love seeing how there are small businesses that have created stuff that are adjacent to. So it's like here, like um, I never heard of Dice Towers till probably like five, six years ago. And like that whole thing has exploded. And like people can 3d print one in their home if they want to you know what i mean it can be designed to a specific kind of ip or whatever i find that really <laughs> intriguing okay jeff that's creepy okay <laughs> <laughs> you, you, it you like don't that is a bit you much. don't like that i'm stroking my wood in front of the camera um okay and how many years of this podcast that has to be a first anyways <laughs> I, I mean, true, like true, true fact, fact, like absolutely that, like people have taken, like, I don't want to say taken advantage of it, but they, you know, you capitalize on it. You, you, you know, the nerds of the days and the things that are popular, you find ways to like make something and, and try to sell it. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, software, like, you know, um, like you were saying, dice towers and D and D. Imagine the the. Just think about the thousands upon thousands of like dice, you know, stores or people making dice at home because you can make it at home. Um, people selling dice are selling dice trays, are selling dice towers, are writing um, RPGs um, based in the um, fifth edition world are. Um, all of that, and you know, all of you know, again, that was that wouldn't have been around in the '80s and '90s, you know, what have you? Like, I mean, maybe it was, but it, again, it was very like, it was very nerdy to be into it, and nerd was seen as negative, mm -hmm. so therefore you weren't going to go out of your way to go get stuff and do things like that you know but, i mean if you're really into something yeah and making money from it and something that you're really into such as again matthew lillard who's really into D D, founded beetle and grims who yeah. yeah i just linked you guys so you can see what their products are like yeah. i mean it's just, and these things are cheap. These are like premium products. Yeah. And then think about like Critical Role. Critical Role is a perfect example of some um, friends. Yes, voice actors yeah. who, wanted to sit around, who wanted to sit around and play Dungeons and Dragons. Or how yeah. they initially started as playing Pathfinder. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. They were a group of friends who got an opportunity Thanks, Geek and Sundry. We'll start there. To do something that they were already doing, but taking it out of the privacy of their homes and putting it out in public. And when you hear some of them talk about it, especially back then, they didn't expect it to be successful. They didn't expect it to do well. They thought it would be done after like an episode or 10 or what have you. And it has grown into their own company. Mm -hmm. that they and they are produ making content and putting out merchandise and they have a you know they've created other companies that put out different games they've created a foundation that raises money for charity like they've done all these things and why and how did that happen because it was th this nerdy thing that they like doing that they found out a lot of other people liked it too. And then it grew and expanded from there. Um, 
that's just that's amazing to me and um to the point where now like i think they're yeah they're in their third campaign uh, major long running campaign they create you know several different like one shots and limited series um so many different cartoons. shows cartoons like which has gosh, had like, two seasons that came out a third one coming and then a essentially another. a spinoff <laughs> yeah and it just it's just you know just thinking about that is mind blowing this niche thing D&D that I don't want to say when they were doing it wasn't popular like it was probably on the cusp of being like that popular that's why they were probably asked to do it but it being this niche thing and building a empire as it were um you wouldn't you wouldn't you would have never thought that would have been a thing you wouldn't you wouldn't if this was like 20, 30, 40, 30 years ago, that wouldn't have been a thing. This wouldn't have been a thing. But now it is. There's, you know, TV shows and cartoons and what have you make references to nerds not as a joke, but often as a um, sign of, of admiration or respect. Um, Stranger Things is a really wonderful example of taking the 80s nerd trope and making them the stars of the series mm-hmm. and that being itself popular like amazing you know even even you know and it sounds weird but like even the revenge of nerds movies problematic as they are like if you were looking at them now probably wouldn't have been made but um the reason they were well known and popular was because they were funny and entertaining and it's weird that that was something that would have been done now I don't I mean it couldn't have been done I don't want to think the movies would be done now they'd have to do something completely different right um, but do you know how many people attended this year's Gen Con mm, right. one of the largest gaming conventions in the United States can you guess? I, don't know. I cannot. They broke attendance I... record in 2023 in its 20th year in Indianapolis with over 70,000 unique attendees. Wow. I was going to say 50, so yeah, above that. Yeah. It's, again, it's crazy to think that that is as popular or as busy as it is like i had I, w- I just game today like i just did rpg the reason we were on such a we hadn't gamed in a month was because people went to gen con you know <laughs> like two of our, our well our dm also had a road trip he, he drove route 30, not route 66 he did a, a road trip but he also um two of the the dm and our player went to gen con um, and they talked about it. It was packed. It was busy. It was crazy. And and I've who I've always been on the fence about going. I've thought about it several times. But the fact that it is so popular, the fact that it is so busy, especially on like Fridays and Saturdays, I I don't know. All of that going on, all of those people and and just I don't know. But it's one of the closest large scale events to me mm-hmm. that the idea behind it is interest intriguing and the timing the timing's weird. It's being in August is all but Yeah, it just ended like last week. Yeah. Who knows? But again, popular event that thrives in nerd them there were seventy thousand nerds all in one place not at the same time but can you imagine <laughs> i can't yeah so yeah i definitely think that there's been a shift and there's been a change and it's interesting and we're all 
recipients of that shift and that change. And who knows what, what the next 40 years holds. Um, you know, I, I think there, I think there will be popularity to a point. I think it will diminish. I don't think it'll go away. Um, I imagine some other stuff will come along and, Mm -hmm. you know, be the, the focal point. Yeah. This is the time yeah. when I'd want to you play the I'm the one that's cool. <laughs> I actually found a fun video that I will I when we were mentioning this topic that came to mind. I have to share it in the chat. Uh, geek versus nerd versus dork. But that hmm. might be another show. That might be another show. I'm ready. I'm good. I think we got the topic. Yeah. Well, folks, uh, I think that's the end. We've nerded out about nerds. These are nerds in one way, shape, or form. Bear nerds? Like bird birds. Birds. About bears? Birds. Birds. <laughs> No. Bards. 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 <laughs> Bards. Bards and birds sound too much like other things. Bard is a thing. Anyway, keep going. Anyways, are you a nerd? Tell us about your nerdum. You can do that in many places, such as going to our website, CubsOutLoud.com, leaving a comment on the blog, choose an email at CubsOutLoud at gmail.com. Leave us a voicemail at 361-CLL-TALK. That's 361-265-8255. That's the first time I've stumbled over that in a while. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, uh, the platform formerly known as Twitter, and YouTube at Cubs Out Loud in the appropriate place of the URL. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, you can join our Entourage chat and just chat us up directly at bit.ly slash telegram dash col. And if you want to see when we're playing and recording these shows, uh, you can check out our Google Calendar at bit.ly slash calendar dash col, where the schedule might be a little different near the end of this month than we normally do. Actually, in some sense, it is normal because we do this right around the same time each year. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, you can get various accoutrements at Zazzle, Zazzle.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Some of the social designs were designed by Smashy. You can find more of his work at tpublic.com slash user slash Smashy the Bear. Uh, you can also become a patron at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud or send us a donation at paypal.me slash Cubs Out Loud. Find us on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, and various other podcasting platforms. If we you can't find us there, let me know and I'll make sure we get on there. You can find me sometimes on the internet at box at box puppy box cut box something or other. Damon. If you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me at theater cub seven nine. Um that's T H E A T R E C U B seven nine on most bear related sites are on Facebook. Or you can find me as pup underscore umber on Twitter. The Twitter is definitely not safe for work. If you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as Gabriel seven three. And with that, take it out, everybody. Good night, everybody. Ciao for now. <laughs> <laughs>